The flag that flew during the British bombardment of Fort McHenry in 1814 was a signal that told everyone who could see it if the Americans were winning or if the battle was lost. Had the smoke cleared in the dawn's early light with a British flag flying, we would have a very different history indeed. In the summer of 1814, the U.S. Capitol and the President's Mansion in Washington, D.C. were burned to the ground. Baltimore became the next target. Marylanders had been preparing for war for months. At Fort McHenry, commanding officer Major George Armistead said he wanted a flag so large the British will have no difficulty seeing it from a distance. He ordered two flags from a shop run by Mary Pickersgill, whose house and shop are still standing on Pratt Street today. Both flags were made by a team of women composed of Mary's family and Grace Wisher, a 13-year-old black indentured servant. Mary, Grace, Caroline, Eliza, Margaret, and Rebecca made the flags out of strips of English wool bunting. The great garrison flag, 30 feet by 42 feet, was too big to construct in their shop, so they had to work in the neighborhood brewery. It took seven weeks of hard work to construct the garrison flag and a smaller storm flag, which we believe was flying during the bombardment. At that time, each new state joining the Union got a star and a stripe. In 1814, the flag had 15 stars and 15 stripes. As more states were added, it became clear that so many stripes would make a very wide flag. So new states got a new star, and the flag went back to 13 stripes for the 13 original colonies. <laughs>